Hey everyone, so today we're driving and I thought I'd just kind of talk a little bit about what it's like to pull a heavy fifth wheel with a big truck. We're driving a one ton Ram, it's a Ram 3500 and uh, it's a dually. We are towing our house, our RV, uh, it's a fifth wheel and it weighs about 16,500 pounds. So all up, we're about 25,000 pounds on the road. We've got the Anderson Ultimate Fifth Wheel Connection Hitch, which is a gooseneck adapter ball hitch. And we also have the Trailer Airbag Flex Pin Box. So between those two, we have a pretty smooth towing, towing fifth wheel. We're going down the road, we've got a semi-rough road here, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty easy. And a lot of times I forget that the fifth wheel's even there when we're on one nice road. When we get on real rough road, there's a little bit more more bouncing, but nothing sharp at all. We just kind of kind of float down and, and whatnot over the bumps. Before we had we had a standard fifth wheel hitch, a standard fifth wheel pin box, and we had some massive jerking and pulling when we would hit big bumps on the road. It was incredibly uncomfortable, but now it's really easy to pull. We chose a one ton truck because we really wanted to be comfortable well within the weight rating, safety ratings of the, the truck on the road. Technically, 16,000, 16,500 pounds can be towed with a single rear wheel truck. You really should have a one ton truck because the one ton trucks have more leaf spring, bigger brakes, things that just help control more weight. And um, I would say that once you're beyond 16,000 pounds, I would recommend a dually um, just because the stability that you get is so much higher on, on the road. I mean, we've got a 20 mile an hour crosswind or so right now, and it's just, it's just so solid, so easy. And um, that's my personal personal thought on it. You just need that extra stability. When you're, when you're towing a trailer that's wider than the truck, you really should have the rear of the truck the same width of the trailer. And that's, that's what our situation is. If you look back, you know, we streamline out to the trailer and we have the same stability on the front of the trailer that the trailer has in the rear. So uh, that's kind of where we go with a, a dually. As for engine drivetrain, I'm not going to pick sides between the big three trucks. The, um, Dodge or Ford, they all can do it, and they all can do it pretty well. Uh, we obviously have the Cummins 6.7 engine in this truck, which I've been very happy with. I think it comes down more to gas versus diesel. You can get yourself a big V10, V12 engine to, to tow, tow a rig with, and, and that'll do it just fine. They put them in motorhomes all the time with this kind of weight. But the diesel, you're definitely going to see higher fuel economy and a little bit easier towing situation just because you have so much more torque um, this rig when you really start towing she'll accelerate the same rate whether you're at 1200 rpm or 3000 rpm you don't really feel any additional additional pull whereas a gas engine you don't have that torque until she's really like way up there and um, I think that that's just a lot easier on the transmission drivetrain and everything in the truck and you're gonna see better fuel economy so for towing I'm definitely gonna stick with diesel, and I would recommend that as well. As for drivetrain, um, again, all the big trucks can do it. Uh, you just you just wanna be smart about it. You don't wanna be foot to the floor every single time you're accelerating. I'm also constantly shifting gears. Although it's an automatic, I'm constantly selecting the gear that I wanna be in for the right situation. It takes quite a bit of a hill before I really need to downshift, but if, if it automatically downshifts, I kinda gauge that, I know where that is, and I'll shift automatically, I'll shift manually before that situation, just to make it easier on the drivetrain uh, before we get into that steep hill. And then accelerating as well. If I'm accelerating uphill, I will shift manually through the gears to just give it a little bit more RPM and back off before I shift again to make it easier climbing that hill on the transmission. Also, you have to be able to watch your transmission temperatures. If you can't watch your transmission temperatures, you have no idea what's going on. When you're in stop and go traffic, it's definitely gonna climb. And you really wanna know where you're at. If you're climbing like crazy, then you need to back off your acceleration at such a bit. Just because you are so heavy, you're doing, you're putting so much more work through the truck, and 
you can't drive it like a, a normal vehicle. And it, it's just the same way with semi truck drivers. I mean, they they manually shift, and they they got to take it easy, or else you will break something. So, just kind of my two cents on uh, on towing, on accelerating and towing uh, with with any any truck. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the limits of your truck and trailer. Your truck has weight ratings and limits that it can safely uh, handle, and you got to think about that, and you got to be within it. You also got to be within the safety weight ratings of your trailer. Your trailer weighs so much and it can only carry so much. And you got to know what that is. And the only way that you can really know what that is is by weighing it. So occasionally we will stop at, uh, you'll see cat scales along the side of the road. They're for truckers and truckers got to know their weights for the exact same reason. You can't overload it or else you're going to break something. You're going to wear it out or you're not going to be able to stop. Lots and lots of problems. We stop at a cat scale and that's how I know how much we actually weigh. So you gotta do that with your rig so that you know that you're within all safety limits, especially if you're full time because you're, you're heavier, you got a lot more stuff and you don't wanna exceed the limits of anything. If you do wanna weigh your truck, uh, it can be a little tricky sometimes with a motorhome because a lot of times you pull onto a trucker scale and they're gonna ask for a trucker number. I've fought with a couple of them, you know, like I don't have a trucker number. I can't wait without a trucker number. Well, they will eventually do it. So if you have a problem, just tell them your motor home. It's, yeah, I think we like to say it's it's for private use or something like that, and they'll usually let you weigh it. And it usually costs about 10 bucks. Go. So when you're towing, you really need to be watching your gauges. Uh, we are always watching our engine coolant temperature, engine oil pressures, transmission temperatures, RPMs, uh, and of course your fuel. Those are kind of the big ones. If you want to get detailed, you can watch your exhaust gases or your oil temperature, things like that. The big ones are what I first mentioned, and you really want to make sure everything's within range. You don't want to be too hot. You don't want to be your RPMs too high, meaning you're in too low gear. you got to watch your transmission temperature so that you don't overheat anything. And then your engine coolant temperature is a big one. Um, you can, if you're really towing up a hill hard, you want to watch that to make sure you're not running too high. I will only run up to about the point where the engine fan comes on before I start to back off on uh, back off on the throttle. You just gotta slow down, slow down, run cooler temperatures, save your engine, save your truck, especially with a diesel. But it's important with a gas too. You want to have a warm engine before you start towing because towing is a lot harder on it than driving normally. You've got to let your engine warm up. I let our engine, I won't move the truck until the oil's over 100 degrees and that's not towing. When towing, I always like to let the engine probably be 140 to 150 degrees before I even move it. Conversely, when you stop, you also want to let it cool down, especially with a diesel, but gas is important as well. The big reason for that is that the oil is, is really hot and your turbo, if you've been towing, is really hot because it's been spooled up so much. And if you shut your engine down when it's still really hot, you can actually cook the oil, call cooking the oil in the turbo, and it'll, um, it'll come up and it can damage the internal components. So it's really important to let your engine idle for a while and I, I watch it and I'll let it I'll let it cool down to the point where the thermostat closes again before I'll shut the engine off. If you've got a big truck designed for towing um, that's not a semi truck you've probably got a tow haul button. Use it every single time you tow. What it does is it boosts the line pressure in the transmission so that when it shifts the the clutch plates will grab harder and it will be a more positive shift and you you won't slip the transmission as much and it'll it'll save the transmission in the long run. It also changes the shift points a little bit. It'll it'll rev the engine a little bit higher um, when when accelerating before shifting and it will also uh, probably automatically downshift when you're going down a hill, at least mine does, to uh, to help control that speed. So if I'm on cruise control, it'll just it'll just downshift and maintain my speed up and down a hill. So driving on the highway is incredibly easy with this rig. Uh, braking is a little more difficult. Braking is always slower with a, a, a lot of load. We have 8,000 pound axles and 8,000 pound brakes on, on the rig and it can stop itself pretty well. 
but you just you got to think about it. Um, we have this additional brake controller here. Uh, the truck does have an integrated brake controller, but it didn't work real well. So I put this brake controller in, upgraded the wire sizing throughout the truck, and so that we had more current available to the trailer. And we get a pretty pretty powerful braking from the trailer, but there's a little bit of a delay. There's always a delay between the trailer braking and the truck braking, so it, it just slows your braking capability down a bit. You gotta look ahead you gotta always keep a further gap between you and the next car to be able to slow down safely. Around town driving this can be a little bit more difficult. We're 33 feet to the back. It's not the longest fifth wheel, but when you're making turns, eh, you gotta watch your, your mirrors. You gotta have the wide angle. That's, that's pre-blind spot detection right there. And it's uh, more important with a trailer, that nice wide angle so that you can see it. You gotta watch it, you gotta watch your tires so that you're not cutting corners. You kinda get the feel of it after you've driven for a while, just kinda like what your corner, what your turning radius is so that you don't cut curbs. But sometimes it's impossible to avoid. And also being in tight traffic situations where people are cutting in and out of your, cutting in front of you and such quickly, and you need to maintain that braking distance can be somewhat stressful. And also we just can't accelerate as fast. So being in traffic where you're stop and go in, in tight situations can be a little more difficult. But when we're out on the highway, it's, it's really pretty easy. We don't drive as fast. We usually drive about 65, um, maybe 70, depending on the situation but we're just kind of chugging along and it just, it saves on stress, saves on truck wear, and it's, it's just easier. Um, you also gotta be real careful about twisting and turning and, and such like that. If we're in real hilly, windy campground areas, it can be tough to, uh, you, you, could, you could bind the trailer because the bed of the truck and the trailer only has so much clearance. So you gotta keep that in mind. You don't wanna let the trailer dip off onto the side of the road or anything. And then the other thing you gotta think about when towing is clearance. We're really tall and we have run into a couple situations where we can't fit under that bridge and you gotta know your height. And tree branches also are incredibly problematic. A lot of times we'll get into a parking lot where there's just too low a tree. We can't make it around, we gotta, we gotta back her up. Um, so you gotta think about tree branches. Backing up can be a little bit more of a trick. Um, I'm used to pulling bumper pull trailers. I've pulled them all my life. Uh, uh, travel trailers behind on the, the bumper. And uh, the fifth wheel turns differently. It pivots at the, the axle point. And to me, it was harder to learn how to back up a fifth wheel. Uh, you really gotta kinda learn to go with it, with the truck a little bit more quickly than with the bumper pull. Um, and again, something you just gotta practice and learn uh, with the fifth wheel. But the fifth wheel can back up a little bit better because you can completely jackknife a fifth wheel. You can go 90 degrees, which you can't do with a bumper pull and push. Um, we have had a few issues doing that before because you're gonna kinda grind the tires, but if you're in a real bit of a pickle, you can usually turn a fifth wheel around in a tighter situation than with a bumper pull trailer. A little, uh, a little side note on travel trailers versus fifth wheels. A travel trailer connects near the bumper of your, your, your truck, and the fifth wheel connects uh, over the bed and over the axle of the truck. So the major difference between the travel trailer and the fifth wheel is where the weight is. We have a lot more weight of the fifth wheel on the truck, whereas the travel trailer has the weight further back, but you still have the weight on the pin and it's further back on the truck. So inherently, a fifth wheel typically tows a little bit better because the weight is over the truck, over the axle, and the axle handles it better. So um, I wouldn't say that one is better over the other, but you're gonna get a better towing experience with a fifth wheel and it's a lot easier to hook up. You don't need sway control. You don't need any other type of, uh, of, of mechanism to stabilize the trailer because the weight is inherently directly over the axle where it really should be. The trick with that is you gotta have a truck. You gotta have a truck that is uh, capable of, of towing a fifth wheel and um, you can't you can't use the bed of your truck for large items like a, a motorcycle or something or tow it with an SUV, obviously. For towing comfort, uh, a fifth wheel is 
always going to beat out a travel trailer. All right, let's talk a little bit about hills. Hills can be kind of stressful driving with a fifth wheel, and um, it's just because you gotta you gotta watch everything, and especially going downhill, all that weight's gonna push you, and you're either gonna need to use your brakes or you're gonna have to run your an engine brake. In this truck, we have an engine brake, and it's really nice. You can downshift, and that'll put back pressure on the engine, but diesels don't really have as much back pressure as a, a gasoline engine. And they add what they call an engine brake, which actually in this truck uses the turbo and it blocks the exhaust a bit to create more back pressure on the engine. And I downshift and then turn the engine brake on and off to, to slow the truck down more and I can control my descent down a hill using the engine brake without using the actual brakes, which would or could possibly overheat them and wear them out a lot faster. So use an engine brake if you've got it. It will save your brakes and uh, be a lot safer and a lot more enjoyable uh, towing downhills. Now, when you're towing uphill, um, even if your truck can do it, watch your gauges. Don't let the truck get too hot. Don't let your transmission get too hot and slow down if you need. Just easier on the truck and what's your rush? All right, well that's been a heck of a rant. I'm in city traffic now, so I should get back to driving. Uh, but hope that's covered uh, some information you might be interested in. Uh, there's a lot more to driving heavy on the road, but basically you just wanna think of everything and uh, just be alert. Really, really be uh, be in the moment when driving, driving a big rig and uh, be smart, be safe. If you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a note, let me know, be happy to answer.